Hi friends, welcome to this Duolingo English test practice video. This practice video is all about the listen then speak question type. You know, the one that looks like this. And this video is very simple. I'm simply going to give you seven sample questions and then show you seven sample answers. One of the best ways to study for this Duolingo English test, or in fact any test, is simply to practice. And that's why I think this video is going to be helpful for you. On top of that, this listen then speak question is actually not on the practice test. So this video will give you an opportunity to practice this question type. And like I said, at the end, I will show you my sample answers as well. Okay, we will get to this practice in just one moment, but I want to say that if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm teacher Luke from detready.com. Visit our website to find more information about the Duolingo English test. We have some courses to help you with your production subscore, and we have a new practice platform. This practice platform gives you the opportunity to practice all of the different questions on the Duolingo English test, and you can see your answers immediately. When you sign up, you get unlimited practice. There is a free version, so you might as well try it. There is a link below in the description. I highly recommend it. Okay, back to this video. Like I mentioned, we're gonna do seven practice questions and then I'll show you some sample answers. But very quickly before we do, let me remind you of some of the key points of this question type. Okay, quickly, here are some key points. Well, your job is simply to listen to a prompt or a question and then respond through speaking. On the real test, you can listen to the prompt three times, but you only have 20 seconds to listen. After the 20 seconds is up, you have to begin speaking. So make sure you listen to the prompt three times within 20 seconds. Once you begin speaking, you can't listen again. So it's really important you understand the question before you begin speaking. In total, you have 90 seconds to answer, but the Duolingo test guide says that you need to speak for at least 30 seconds. So the Duolingo test guide says you have to speak for at least 30 seconds. After you've spoken for 30 seconds, you can click the next button. However, I strongly recommend that you try to speak for longer because fluency is part of the criteria and one aspect of fluency is length. So if you can speak for longer, you'll get a better score for fluency. On the Duolingo test guide, it says that you only get this question type once on the test. However, when I took the test, I actually had this twice. So just know that sometimes you might come up twice. And it contributes to your conversation and production subscore. So those were the key points of this question type. If you want to learn some tips on how to answer this well, I recommend you watch this video here. Or watch it next, you can find it below in the description. Okay then, well let's jump into this practice. Like I said, I've prepared seven questions and sample answers for you. I'll play each question type three times, just like on the real test. Then I'll give you 90 seconds to answer, and at the end you can see my sample answer for that question. I strongly recommend that you use the 90 seconds to actually speak out an answer, because it will be really useful practice for you. Okay then, well let's jump into sample question number one. Describe a major decision you have taken in your life. Was it the right decision? Describe a major decision you have taken in your life. Was it the right decision? Describe a major decision you have taken in your life. Was it the right decision?
A really important decision I've made recently is to study abroad, which is the reason I'm here taking this test today. No one from my family has ever had the chance to study abroad before. My parents were actually hoping I'd start training to become a doctor as soon as I graduate. But in fact, I don't think I want to practice medicine. I really want to study marketing, especially digital marketing, and I want to learn about different cultures. If I study digital marketing in Canada, I can learn how to do business in this new digital era, which is of course very competitive and fast-moving. As for whether it was the right decision, I'm pretty confident it was, and I'm really looking forward to broadening my experience and meeting new people in Canada. I'm going to do my best to finish my university course and I'll go back to my country with new ideas that will help me get a good job. So, anyway, that's an important decision that I have taken in my life. So that was sample question number one done with a sample answer. How did you find it? Was it easy or difficult? Let me know below in the comments. Okay, just very quickly before we move on to question number two, I would like to share with you my practice platform. In this practice platform, you can practice all of the different question types on the Duolingo English test, just like this, listen then speak one. We've made hundreds of different sample questions with sample answers for this listen then speak question type. So you can practice lots of different prompts and see really useful sample answers. I think this is one of the best ways to prepare for this Duolingo English test. So if you're interested, you can find links to this below in the description. Okay, well, let's get to question number two. Describe a school subject that you did not like in the past, but you like now. What made you change your mind? Describe a school subject that you did not like in the past, but you like now. What made you change your mind? Describe a school subject that you did not like in the past, but you like now. What made you change your mind? When I was a school student, like everyone else, I had to study a lot of subjects. I enjoyed most of them, but there was one that I really didn't like, and that was history. I think the reason was that I disliked the teaching method of my teacher. To be completely frank with you, he was a lazy teacher. All he did was copy words and facts from our course book to the board, and made us write down what he wrote. There was no actual teaching involved. He then would tell us that we had to memorize all the information if we didn't want to receive a low grade for his subject. It was awful. When I was in my early 20s, I watched a film about Roman history. The film was about how the Romans invented things like bridges, roads, stadiums, and lots of other important things. I really enjoyed the film and realized that history is not as dull as I originally thought. After watching that film, I began reading more about history watching documentaries, and even going to museums. I'm completely fascinated with history now. Nowadays more and more people live non-active lives. Why do you think this is? What are the problems associated with this? Nowadays more and more people live non-active lives. Why do you think this is? What are the problems associated with this? 
Nowadays more and more people live non-active lives. Why do you think this is? What are the problems associated with this? Living a non-active life is becoming more and more common these days, even though there are a large number of sports facilities and government campaigns. The main problems caused by an inactive lifestyle are obesity and back pain. Actually, I have suffered with back pain, and it is awful. It's a well-known fact that long periods of physical inactivity raise the risk of becoming overweight and obese. This is because you burn fewer calories and easily gain weight, when you don't move or exercise often. Also, posture and back problems are associated with leading a non-active life. Sitting for long periods causes serious back pain, and this can have long-lasting problems. All in all, leading a non-active lifestyle causes a lot of health problems, including obesity and spinal issues. I suggest people start exercising and going outside more often. For the past three years, I've been doing 20 minutes of yoga every day, and it has helped me overcome my back pain. Global warming is one of the biggest threats humans face in the 21st century. What problems are associated with this? Global warming is one of the biggest threats humans face in the 21st century. What problems are associated with this? Global warming is one of the biggest threats humans face in the 21st century. What problems are associated with this? Global warming is certainly the biggest issue facing humanity this century. The biggest worry I have is the rising ocean levels because I live near the sea. The most concerning problems caused by climbing sea levels are that land is being lost and people's homes being flooded. 
As water levels rise, low-lying land gets flooded, and many towns and cities get seriously damaged. On top of all that, millions of people all over the world live in coastal areas, and if the sea rises by even a few feet, they completely lose their property. Another major problem related to global warming is air pollution. Nowadays many big cities all over the world have major air pollution problems, and this could lead to residents of those cities becoming seriously ill as they get older. In my opinion, it's time that we moved away from fossil fuels and tried using a cleaner type of energy, like wind power, or even nuclear energy. Global warming's certainly the biggest threat to humans in the 21st century, and I'm very worried. Is there a job that you would not like to do in the future? What is the job? Why do you think it is undesirable? Is there a job that you would not like to do in the future? What is the job? Why do you think it is undesirable? Is there a job that you would not like to do in the future? What is the job? Why do you think it is undesirable? Nowadays, there are ample choices available in the market when it comes to career options. If I had to choose one particular job among many that I wouldn't like to do, I suppose it would be a sales job. Once I worked as a salesman for a computer company, and I really hated it. When I worked in the sales department for that company as an intern, I was in charge of making cold calls and trying to sell computers and other computer-related items like printers and so on. Initially, I was very enthusiastic about calling people and selling them the computers. But right away I figured out that it was an incredibly stressful job for me. I'm an introvert, so calling and meeting lots of strangers every day made me very anxious. I have a lot of respect for sales workers, especially successful ones. They have a lot of determination and patience for their job. But I believe I don't have the skill set or personality for a sales job in the future. Anyway, that's a job that I certainly would not like to do in the future. It is better for children to grow up in the countryside than in a big city. Do you agree or disagree? It is better for children to grow up in the countryside than in a big city. Do you agree or disagree? It is better for children to grow up in the countryside than in a big city. Do you agree or disagree?
There are some obvious pros and cons of living in a city and living in the countryside. And to be frank, I'm not sure which is better. I think children who grow up in the countryside seem to be more mature and independent. The skills they need in life develop faster because of the environment they're brought up in, and this has some obvious advantages. On the flip side, even though kids who grow up in big cities tend to be less independent, they have more career and educational opportunities. In an ideal world, most children would live in a city and visit the countryside frequently or vice versa. I was pretty lucky that I spent most of my early childhood in the countryside, but then moved to a medium-sized city when I was about 15 years old. I'm sure this balance has helped me a lot in my life. Describe an exciting experience you have had. What happened? Describe an exciting experience you have had. What happened? Describe an exciting experience you have had. What happened? One of the most exciting experiences in my life so far was when I launched my first project for my business. I felt very proud of the product I had made, but I also had doubts about how I could find people to buy the product. So ultimately, I had very low expectations and just hoped a few people would like the product and support me. When launch day arrived, I was nervous but hopeful. At first, nothing happened and I started to get very worried. For the first few hours, my fears seemed to be confirmed. But then slowly over time, people began to find and buy the project, and it turned into one of the most exciting times of my life. Since then, I've launched several other small businesses, mostly on the internet, and I absolutely love thinking of new products to create. I think the most exciting experiences in my life so far have all been business-related. Okay, wow, well done. You finished seven practice questions with sample answers. How did you do? Did you find this easy or difficult? Let me know below in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, I recommend you watch this one here next or this one here. Okay, I'll see you there. Take care.